welcome back to a thought for the day yesterday we thought about the fact that jesus gave up so much to take on human form uh, to live among us and we also thought about the fact that he did this in obedience to his father's will and out of love for us today i would like us to think about jesus ministry one of the features of jesus ministry was that he reached out to the needy. When the Pharisees accused Jesus of eating with tax collectors and sinners, Jesus responded, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus did not discriminate. He reached out to everyone who was needy, regardless of status. This included people who were regarded as outcasts, tax collectors, lepers, Samaritans. He even promised a dying thief that he would join him in his kingdom. From our perspective, this means that whatever our situation, whatever our background, whatever we have done wrong in the past, Jesus reaches out to us today and that is certainly something to praise him for so what was the core of jesus teaching well jesus took the ritualistic old testament law and interpreted it in a practical and easily understandable way we particularly see this in the sermon on the mount which can be found in matthew chapters 5 to 7. at the conclusion of the sermon on the mount Matthew comments that when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers of the law. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus sets out his requirements for the quality and conduct of life in God's kingdom. It sets out a template as to how we should conduct our lives and in particular, how we should conduct our relationships with others. So, at the core of Jesus' teaching was a desire for us to fully obey the law, but in a practical and compassionate manner, the aim being to draw us into God's kingdom. I recommend reading the Sermon on the Mount in its entirety today to remind out yourselves of Jesus' requirements. Nonetheless, Many of the requirements are extremely challenging. And after reading the Sermon on the Mount, you can feel that you have been set up to fail. But now we come to the culmination of Jesus' ministry. At the start of his ministry, Jesus met with a Pharisee named Nicodemus. The account of this meeting can be found in John chapter 3. In their discussion, Nicodemus struggled to understand Jesus' ministry. Jesus then made a very important statement in verses 16 and 17. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The Sermon on the Mount brings us into a realisation of our inadequacy. But once we acknowledge this inadequacy before God, it also directs us to the great hope that we have through, that through faith in Jesus, we have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And it is this message that is the heart, that is at the heart of Jesus' ministry. If you have not already put your faith in Jesus, I urge you strongly to do so today. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you that re you reached out to sinners like us. We praise you that your promise of salvation is open to all who put their trust in you. Today, Lord, we come to you again and confess you as our Lord and Saviour. Amen.